Joining me now is a great civil rights leader in our own right, and someone who was also there at that speech, Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, Democrat of Washington, D.C. Thank you for being here, first of all. Of course, Reverend. This Washington Post article confirms what many of us have known. This was a uniquely personal speech for the president, wasn't it, Congresswoman? Oh, you could sense that, and, and I agree with you, Reverend. As I sat listening to this speech, I said, this is not Obama's normal, super inspirational speech. Something different is happening here. It was uh, virtually definitional. Here was the president almost redefining uh, exceptionalism, Americanism, patriotism to be aspirational, to be always trying to do better, not the way some of my colleagues define it uh, as, as, as exercising American power. If power made you exceptional, there are a great many exceptional countries countries or nations in, in the world today. I mean, in that case, China is exceptional. This notion that each generation can do best by being self-critical of its own country and that that's how you get progress came through in this speech. It's as if the president said, how can I write a speech that fits this historic occasion? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that. That is what I felt. You know, one part of the speech appears to be a rebuttal of President Reagan's famous City on a Hill speech, in which he called the country's freedoms fragile. President Obama had a different take. Watch this. We respect the past, but we don't pine for the past. We don't fear the future. We grab for it. America's not some fragile thing. We are large, in the words of Whitman, containing multitudes. We are boisterous and diverse and full of energy, perpetually young in spirit. Is this the vision of the country now for the 21st century? Is this what we need now, big and noisy and diverse? And that's what we are. And instead of sitting on a hill, we're climbing the hill. And we're in a different world. The president understood that this was not the world of post-World War II where we were king of the hill. It's a world in which there are a number of nations, uh, China, uh, the Asian nations, uh, insisting that they too must have world power. How do you keep your greatness if you're being challenged? Because we're being challenged. And he says, you keep climbing in the hill, or on the hill. You understand you're not sitting on the hill because you just sit there. You will be overtaken. You keep perfecting American democracy. If we hadn't been perfecting American democracy, then I think we would not have understood what the founders understood. When they said, um, all men are created equal. Was there one of them that believed uh, all of us were equal? Mm -hmm. It was aspirational. It was saying, make it so, make it come true. And that's what the president was saying. This will go down, I believe, at least thus far, as one of the great speeches of the 21st century. Do you believe has, that it will go down in history as one I, of the I great believe. speeches of the 21st century? I, I believe that because when you think of speeches um, that you revere from American presidents, there are very few of these. Ask not what you can do. You can ask for your country. Ask what you can do for your country, for example. This is the kind of speech where people will take out parts of it to say over and over again. And it helps us at a time when we are feeling that, that there are others who are claiming power. And yet, to understand how important we have been, we have to keep climbing or we will lose power. We will yeah. lose exceptionalism. We will lose patriotism. Thank you, Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton. Thank you for your time tonight. Always a pleasure, Reverend. We'll be right back.